and she steamed out of the yard. Meatball songs don't propel engines, Rebecca said. That would be very silly if Thomas sang on top of spaghetti. Imagine someone sneezing a meatball off their spaghetti bowl and making it roll into a garden and then turning it into a tree, Gabby said to the others. And they steamed down the line. Sneezing a meatball off of your plate and making it roll off a table is crazy talk, Six Engine said. And they steamed into the sunset. Here we go, they said. The sun set and the rails went clickety-clack with the wheels going over them. Clickety-clack, here we go, said Quarla. And before long, the sun went down and the whole train went through the night. And then the grade crossing was up ahead with people sleeping in their house and then Koala's driver turned on the ditch lamps and she steamed over the crossing. One morning broke. Quarla, Irie, Tiara, Gabby, he, he, Lariah, and Jensie steamed through the mountains. It was beautiful. Here we go, said Quarla. And they steamed over the bridge. I know a lot about meatball songs because I can't puff out meatballs through my funnel. And the engines laughed as they went along. Then there was trouble. Gordon was pulling the express along the line, and he was enjoying himself. Express coming through, Gordon said. Ahead was a red signal. It was supposed to tell Gordon to stop, but instead, he ran the red signal, and the passengers were horrified. You can't run the red signal, Gordon! Stop! They cried. Then Gordon saw engines ahead. A head-on collision is imminent! He yelled, Stop! We should stop soon, Irie said. We shoot, Irie, Quarla said. Gordon is right in front of us. Gordon was horrified because a head-on collision was imminent. Stop me, please, he yelled. Quarla's driver threw their train into emergency braking and Gordon did the same thing, but it was too late! Mm. Oh no! cried the passengers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but the freight cars came to a stop and Quarla had turned on her side, feeling bruised. And Gordon had buried himself under the center beam and express coaches, which telescoped into his tender. Oh, indignity! He winced. 
No one will like it if I'm covered in building supplies. I don't like being tilted over, Irie said. James was shocked. Why is there so much debris here? He asked. Sir Topham had inspected Gordon. Your pipes are reproducing a lot, Gordon, he said. You're gonna have to go to the steamworks. But sir! Water's gonna leak out of my boiler, and then I'm gonna use this big mega diaper under my bogey! So no water leaks onto the track, sir! There's no such thing as a mega diaper, Sir Topham had said. That's just make-believe. We only use that for tank cars. Gordon was proud. I'll promise to be really useful once I'm repaired, he said. Then that's a good engine, Sir Topham Hatt said. He was proud. James was very proud. Gordon will be fixed soon, sir! He said Sir Topham Hatt was wrong. Gordon is not going to be on Sodor for a while, Mr. Cakester said. So, I'm going to have an engine called Gigi pull the express on Sir Topham Hatt's railway and... Becky will bring her here tomorrow. And James steamed off with the passengers on his train and puffed out of the wreck backwards. Over at the steamworks, Thomas told Gordon all about his wreck. Little engines can do smart things a lot, said Thomas, and I'm not strong enough to pull the express. Before long, Nevi and Loisia were pulling the Amtrak mix-up with 136 cars behind them. It was a long train. It's best that we're double-heading, Nevi said. I bet so, said Loisia, and they steamed down the line. Woman train coming through, they said. And the freight cars went clickety-clack for the rest of the ride. <laughs>